Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am just another tinfoil hat. Welcome to my show. Today, we are going to be discussing a creature that I mentioned briefly in my Faceless Entities video, that of the Morristown monster. So, May 21st of 1966, around dusk, a man by the name of Raymond Todd and three unnamed companions were parked in the Morristown National Historical Park in Morristown, New Jersey. Suddenly, they saw a strange being kind of shuffling across the park. They described it as being at least seven feet tall with incredibly broad shoulders, covered strangely enough with both scaly skin and long black hair. They claimed that it walked in a stiff fashion, rocking back and forth, and perhaps weirdest of all, was described as faceless. So perhaps unsurprisingly, after seeing this bizarre being, the four friends were incredibly freaked out by the thing and became hysterical. However, what is kind of surprising is that instead of making the decision to just get out of there, they actually drove to the very entrance of the park where they stopped to inform incoming vehicles that there was a monster in the park. In fact, Raymond Todd was so disturbed by the event that he started hailing oncoming cars asking to be driven to the municipal hall so that he could inform the police of what they had seen. Surprisingly enough, and I'll get back to this, a young woman actually agreed, was like, yeah, sure, man, I believe that you saw the monster. I'll take you to the municipal hall and you can tell it to the police, which is exactly what he did. And the officers were convinced that his fear was genuine. Um, as to what he saw, they had no idea, but they did believe that he had seen something that disturbed him. Now, to make matters even perhaps more bizarre than four people seeing this faceless, shambling, scaly, long-haired being in the Morristown Historical Park District, is the fact that roughly a year prior, four other people had seen, if not the same thing, a very similar thing. And one of these four previous witnesses actually happened to be the woman who drove Raymond Todd to the municipal hall. Now, I guess that kind of deals with the mystery of how someone could be so easily convinced to take this hysterical guy to go report a monster. She, of course, had seen it the year before. Yes, coincidentally or synchronistically enough, the young woman who requested to remain anonymous said that a year earlier, she and three friends had actually been parked in roughly the same area after dark when they heard something thump the back of their vehicle. Visible through the rear window was a large, broad-shouldered form. Now, they were unable to see the head, um, likely because of the placement of the creature right outside the window, and sped away from the scene in a state of hysteria. The young woman's mother actually convinced her not to report it to the police for fear that they wouldn't believe her. So roughly a year apart, we have very similar sightings of what appears to be either the same or a very similar case creature in roughly the same scenario. Four young people sitting in a parked car and not in daylight. One sighting was at dusk, the other was after dark. Um, you know, to me at least, of course, it could simply be dumb luck that it was the same number of people, same location, same creature, or it could be um, kind of like the concept of sort of trapped energy for ghosts or the stone tape theory that the same sort of recording of an incident kind of repeats itself, the same narrative spins around and around. Of note too is the fact that in neither case did the witnesses see the face. Now of course in the 1965 sighting this was mainly due to the fact that the creature was right outside the car and its face and head was just not in view. However in either case the conclusion was the same. Neither set of witnesses saw the face, in one because it was not visible and in the other because it simply didn't have one. Now, for all intents and purposes, this kind of does fall in line with sightings of Bigfoot. You have a really tall, broad-shouldered, long hair covered creature. Um, yeah, that sounds Bigfoot-esque at least. However, the sharp left turn at Albuquerque here is the inclusion of scales and, you know, also that bizarre fact that it appeared to not have a face. Um, but anyway, the description of the scaled being, plus its kind of stiff gait, calls to mind another car enthusiast, the bizarre riverside monster of the Wetzel encounter. Yeah, that is just simply a really weird detail, that of this kind of um, weird, stiff, unsteady gait. Um, this is something I've seen quite a bit with cryptids of the stranger set or the more high strangeness variety, that it seems as though they physically just aren't quite attuned to their environment or even their body itself. Um, you know, another highly strange aspect of this creature, of course, is the lack of a face. As I mentioned previously in the video on faceless entities, this has been observed in connection with many different types of anomalous beings. The Missouri monster of great fame, which of course was uh, um, accompanied by sightings of fireballs in the sky. There's also the fantastic account from Skinwalker Ranch of what appeared to be some part-formed creature without a face kind of crawling through um, a void in the world. 
Now, the lack of a face, as well as this kind of unsteady gait, um, really calls to mind just a lot of examples of really more high strangeness cryptid encounters, where it seems as though, you know, to kind of stretch the imagination, maybe they're not perfectly attuned to this physical environment. They might just be sort of a part formed or not yet ready projection um, onto the environment, something almost spectral and almost physical in nature, kind of falling at this odd crossroads. So if you enjoyed this episode on the Morristown Monster, please like, and if you're new to this field of crop circles, go ahead and subscribe to see what weirdness the future may have in store. Till then, you can keep up with me on my free blog at patreon.com slash justanothertinfoilhat. And for today, I am Zelia Edgar, signing off. Do we?